Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Hopefully you're all having a fantastic day today so far. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be looking at some information that the devs have shared um, about cargo hauling, about space trucking. Because I did a video a couple days ago now, um, it was the space trucker one, talking about um, the Inside Star Citizen. And since then, the devs have put out something, just explaining it a little bit more. They said there was a few things that they missed out in the Inside Star Citizen and they wanted to kind of talk about it a little bit more. Um, I had Watchdog Thank You posted the link to the dev article and then Vert posted a video and um, Lord also posted a video. So I have one of those videos up in front of me here today that we're going to watch together, which goes over all the dev notes. And it'll be interesting to see the video, just the person who's making this video's point of view. There's two videos. I don't know if we'll watch both. But um, we might do, just to see two different opinions on it, to be completely honest with you. The other thing I wanted to start doing is every Saturday, I wanted to do a Star Citizen Space Truckers Union meeting. <laughs> you know what I mean? So for me, for a little background, if you're new to the channel, I love trading. I've always loved trading in this game and doing delivery missions. Uh, since I started playing two years ago, that's just the thing I fell in love with and continue to love. Um, so I thought, why not just continue doing the thing that I love more than anything, which is trading. Um, so I wanted to do that every Saturday and what that'll consist of is actual good trade routes. We'll be talking about trading if there's any updates from devs or anything like that. Uh, but I'll also be showing like some really good trades that you can do in whatever size ship and also trade routes. I want to try and make some trade route videos. So that'll be on Saturdays. Um, and we'll also have input from the community as well if any of you guys have any trade routes or any trades that you think are good, leave them in the comment section on those videos, and then the pre the next week, sorry, we'll, uh, we'll look into those. And also, I get a lot of info in Gilded as well. Um, so yeah, we can look into it. And then also, we're going to be coming back to the channel, I don't know what day of the week, but there's going to be one day of the week, probably Wednesdays, uh, Beautiful Trade Locations. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember, but I used to do a series called Beautiful Trade Locations. And essentially what that was is not necessarily high profit trading. It's just going to all of these cool places that you wouldn't necessarily go to as a trader because there's not that much profit to be made there. But going there, looking around, pick, buying something. It could be anything. And then going and selling it and just seeing what the profit would be. But I know for me personally, a lot of the Microtech Moons, I haven't been to a lot of the trade spots on those. Just because they're not, you know, known to be very good places to trade. So I don't do it. Um, but I'm going to start doing it. It's going to be called the same as it's always been. Beautiful trade locations. And I'll make a playlist as well. So you guys that are newer can go back and look at the other's videos. Because a lot of the other beautiful trade location videos I have don't exist anymore. After they did the new... Um, What's the word? I don't know. Planet Tech. After they did that and they changed it, a lot of these beautiful trade locations aren't there anymore. Or if they are there, they're not as beautiful as they once were. Um, but yeah, so that's the plan anyway. So beautiful trade locations is coming back starting once a week. And also the Star Citizen Space Truckers Union mission. Mission? Meeting. <laughs> will be on Saturdays. And that, like I say, will be more showing you, if you are a trader, some good spots to go to to make money. And some really cool, if you just want to do um, like a route, like if you don't want to just do one back and forth trade, if you want to actually land, sell, buy something else, you know, a good trade route. Uh, so that'll be on Saturdays. Just so you know, and I'm excited for it. I've been thinking about it and I'm like, you know what, I love trading. Let's just do more trade videos like I used to do. So that's what we're going to be doing. Anyway, today, like I say, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the cargo um, hauling, space trucking. We talked about it a couple days ago, and since then the devs have spoken. And there's supposedly some really cool information that we're going to look at here today together. Like I say, there's two videos, basically the exact same thing, going over the same thing, but it's two points of view. I'm assuming I haven't watched either. Um, but the one we're going to watch here today is from a YouTuber named The Eradicator. I think this is the one that Lord sent to me. So thank you, Lord. Uh, it's 10 minutes long, so let's watch this together. It's going to give us all the information from the devs and, you know, their opinions on it, and I'll share my opinions on it also. So uh, let me just minimize myself. Whoop! There we go. And let's get into it. I'll make sure the audio is okay in a second when the audio kicks in. Speed up the intro here a little Spectrum, bit. where we will have a look at the post from Jake Dorsey. I think the audio is okay. Storm Knife CIG on Spectrum. So yeah, so this is a dev. 
Um, I think he's responding to somebody because it says, hey, Bucky Tim, wanted to give some additional... Okay, so I'm sure he's going to read it, so I'm not going to read it all, but let's... Jake Dorsey is in charge of the cargo refactor. We saw him in the last episode of Inside Star Citizen, and he gave some clarification in the post on Spectrum about the community, the commodity kiosks. And here Jack says that uh, some of the... Uh, some of Basically, what we saw in Inside Star Citizen was what will be... In 3.18 but there's still a lot of work that they are going to be doing what we'll see in 3.18 will be just the first iteration some people for example were wondering oh why is the ship taking so much space in the concept images that we saw in inside star season and Jake Dorsey here is giving us some extra information so let's have a look at these amazing uh, pieces of concept of art. They represent, by the way, this is not again, this is not going to be in 3.18 they represent the extra work that they want to be doing after 3.18 simply because there are going to be graphs that are not natively implemented into building blocks that they have to be working on uh, there is going to be modularity that is not in a game yet but eventually that's something that will be happening so that's why so here we are having a look at uh, very interesting i'm loving this here caterpillar. Uh, the caterpillar and you're going to, be, to, to see that it will be possible to put various types of cargo in different cargo bays of the of the caterpillar and that's what they want to be doing eventually in the future you can see these different types of colors here uh, of the, these crates of cargo represent different types of uh, type of cargo and we were so also mixed. told that uh, eventually in the future the mass of the cargo is also going to be very important and it will be important to uh, appropriately balance the mass of uh, of the cargo so for example let's say you have some medical supplies on one side of the ship and some uh, metals like, uh, for example, that um, not titanium. Titanium is light. Like, for example, uh, quartz. <laughs> Let's say you want to, you you are crazy. You want to trade quartz, right? Why not, right? Well, uh, quartz is definitely going to be more ex more heavier than the than the medical supplies. So you cannot just put all of your quartz in front of the ship and the medical supplies in the back simply because the repartition of masses would not be balanced and the ship will be much heavier in the front than in the back. So it Interesting. I never thought that that's the direction they were going. Surprisingly, because let's be honest, our citizen likes to make things as realistic as possible to a fault sometimes. Don't scream at me, but you know, it could be. Um, <clears throat> it could be interesting having that, like the weight balance of the ship. Hopefully it's something that's simple, because I know loading and unloading these ships isn't going to be as easy as clicking where you want it to go anymore, right? Or that's, It's not even like that now. You just... Click buy and it appears on your ship, but eventually you're going to have to load it yourself. So, is it going to be hard to, like, move things around? Is it going to take a lot of time? Are you going to have to be, like, super, you know, disciplined on how you load these ships? Is it going to have to be a lot of thought into it? Like, okay, if I'm going here to buy this, and then I'm going here to buy this, i got to make sure if I'm doing a trade route that I balance, I think about that beforehand and I balance the ship out. And also how much is it going to affect the weight of the ship? Like flying, is it gonna make it when you're in atmosphere, like when you're trying to land, is it gonna be super heavy? Is it when you're trying to take off, is the ship gonna be really heavy and take forever to get out of the atmosphere? I don't know. Do I like it? I don't know. <laughs> I'd have to try it out in game. Um, but that's interesting for sure. Yeah, that's interesting. Let's continue. So it's also something that you will have to be uh, to be wary of when you uh, when you fill your ship. Now, next is also uh, something uh, very interesting. Here we have different types of uh, cargo bays, and uh, you can see here you can either choose to uh, put all of your cargo on one side, and you have a, another part here. But it's not always going. And keep in mind, again, this is concept. It says right there at the bottom, concept work in progress. So this is just what they're thinking right now. And this is beyond 3.18. So this could change a lot. So we can't take this for, you know, to be uh, that easy. Uh, you can also just put uh, your cargo on one side and not on the other side, because why not? Or maybe I don't think that's what this image is showing. I think it's just because of the way th this cutout of the ship is. It looks like right here, this is the floor. And then on the other side, it's the same thing, but it's just because it's a different angle. And I think this is the floor. I think this is taken because you can see by the way that the um, the lift right here 
is perfectly in line with this green spot. So I, I think he's looking at it wrong there. I don't think this is green and then this part's empty. I think this is just the angle. I think this is the entire inside of the ship because you have other things uh, planned. Let's say, for example, you want to put a, a bike or some kind of ground vehicle, you'll also be able to do that. But then no, yeah, that's going so. to be a problem because it's not going to be uh, very uh, balanced in terms of uh, mass. I don't, I don't, I, I honestly don't think that's, I think he's looking at that the wrong way. Again, I think it's because of the angle of the ship. And the reason I believe that is because this looks the same as this. It's just on this side, you can't see it because it's underneath. So you can't see this little area. But the thing that makes it to me more obvious is the fact that this, the two corners line up perfectly with the ramp. It's not like it finishes in the middle of the ramp so you can put things on the other side. So it's also something you have to consider when you um, when you fill your ship with cargo. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is this one right here. This is very interesting. Now, here you are looking at... Uh, again, this is concept. That's what they want to be uh, doing in the future. But you are you are looking at. So we've already gone over this new thing. If you want to look at that, it's two days ago's video. Oh, three days ago's video. Sorry, this video is coming up after the inside Star Citizen with the Banu. Just so you know, I'm recording this before the Banu video. So I recorded this yesterday. Um, so I'm not going to talk about the Banu and things like that. Or we may have got more information on that inside Star Citizen. But if you want to see that one about the Banu Defender. Look at yesterday's video, because that's the one where we talk about the Banu Defender, which I'm excited to react to now, but I haven't seen it yet. But when you're watching this, it came out yesterday, <laughs> if that makes sense. But if you want to look at this, we did go into more detail about this. Um, this is new, though. This does look a little bit different um, than what they showed us in the other videos. So they definitely haven't decided on like an exact how this is going to work, because this is different than what we just saw last week, so... Uh, the cargo transfer timer. Again, these times here is just an example. It's probably a placeholder. That's not how it's going to be. It will probably be balanced, but uh, it's giving us an idea of how it's going to be. So you will see how long it takes for the cargo to be put into your ship. Uh, That's cool. I mean, we always thought this. I didn't know if it was going to be like this or if we had to manually do it. And I'm sure eventually it's going to change again because they want it to be more realistic. Um, but the fact that it's going to take, by the looks of this, close to like 20 minutes, because this has already came down here a little bit. So I think it's going to take about 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. Um, so that's interesting. So it's going to take you a lot longer to trade. If it's if loading and unloading is going to take 30 minutes each, that's like an hour, let's just say, just to load and unload. So the profits have to, they have to balance that out and make the profits a little bit higher. In my opinion, because you don't want to spend an hour loading and unloading whilst also putting either thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of UEC on board your ship. You're already putting yourself in harm's way because you're going to have to sit and wait for 30 minutes to load it, which means, you know, pirates have to come in that 30 minutes. You're basically a sitting duck. You can't do anything. Uh, so in my opinion, the profits would have to be increased for that because of the risk and the time and effort and energy that goes into it. Because, you know, if you spend an hour doing something and you get, you know, 20K, 50K, whatever it is, that's going to be pretty annoying. Obviously, if you're trading in a ship this size, that's probably what you're going to get anyway. And this is a long time for this ship. Imagine what a Caterpillar or a C2 is going to be. I mean, I could only imagine if it takes this amount of time for this ship, it would be double that for a bigger ship. But maybe it's just a consistent. Every single ship takes the exact same amount of time. And also, I'm saying this and arguing... Not arguing, but discussing how this is going to work. But again, this is just... It's a concept. We don't... This... You know, there's no point in me trying to say if it's good or bad um, when it's just a concept. But in my opinion, they would have to uh, figure something out to balance it. How is... Uh, your cargo being moved out and in. So here, for example, we can see that they're still unloading uh, five, three SUs out of five, but they're also going to load after that seven. And also... Uh, the oh, I didn't even look at that. So that's... they. So this is if you're doing like a trade route where you're landing, you're unloading stuff and buying at the same time. So that's cool. Uh, but the higher workers I didn't see, which is absolutely fantastic and i cannot wait for that so they're saying it's three thousand uec each so obviously this is going to cut into your profits 
right? So they're going to have to increase the payouts of these trades if you want to make a decent profit. Because let's say it's 3,000 each and you get four of them, right? That's 12,000 UEC. And that's just here. You're going to have to unload it somewhere else as well and pay probably another 12 grand. So that's, you know, you're looking at 24,000 for one one trip to unload or to load and then unload if you hire workers and if you hire four you know obviously to speed it up a little bit um so you're gonna have that that's 24k you know it would have like i say do you want to waste even more time and pay less or just get one worker or maybe no workers so you can increase your profits but it takes hours to do or you're going to want to pay to make it faster but lose the profits a little bit. I personally would pay to get it faster because I, I get bored. If I'm sitting there for an hour waiting for this stuff, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'd get bored. And it's riskier. So I would rather pay the money to speed it up a little bit. But I'd love to know your thoughts on that. The amount of workers who will be doing that. So he had his mouse over it, but it's 3,000 each and it's a 5% time reduction each. So if you get four, you know, that's 20%. Oh, but it looks like you can only get two by the looks of it. I'm guessing that's what this is. They're showing that there's one, he's hired one, and then you can see the plus symbol on this one, mean, and it's grayed out, or like a darker gray, so you can get that. So it looks like in this concept, there's only two you can buy. So it'd be a 10% reduction in time. Okay, interesting. For you, will you be doing that yourself? Or will you pay NPCs to be doing that? Now, are those NPCs going to actually uh, do the work and we will see them uh, do the work physically? Or will this be uh, in the, for example, will the ship be stored? And will this be happening in the background where the ship will be stored? Now, this is something that we still don't know. I would love to be able to see that with my very own eyes, but uh, probably uh, there's probably going to be some game magic and uh, they're yeah i'm assuming it's going to be game magic too i don't think i mean seeing it with your own eyes would be sick but i feel like there's so much development to do something like that like physically see guys pushing carts or driving forklifts into your truck i feel like that would just cause so much it's just it would slow down the servers if you have dozens of people trading on the same server and they're all doing this i feel like and just the mechanics of that like where you land your ship will be different each time, right? So having them being able to trace like a path to your ship, I don't think that's going to happen to be completely honest. I just don't. If it does, it would be sick, but I think that's I think that's asking a little bit too much. Probably going to be doing that in the background, but in the meantime, you know, it's still going to be simulated in the interface and you are going to be able to see uh, the kind of workers that you are going to be hiring for how much uh, you are going to be hiring them. So you see here, uh, it's just an example, but uh, the, each of the workers that you could hire for this kind of job here, we're talking about a cutlass uh, that will cost you 3,000. Uh, That's true. Maybe it increases the price of the workers the bigger the ship. I don't know. Alpha UEC for each worker. You better be sure that your cargo is going to be worth much more than that and that your profit is going to be worth much more than it that has because to be. right now i don't know a lot of cargo that is going to be giving a profit of uh, over 6000 of uh, uec in the cutlass black so that's also something yeah i think you i think there is but they hope is going to be a little bit balanced as well or otherwise maybe they want to encourage players to be unloading and loading the cargo on their own now, notice we also have a couple of uh, future uh, f future cargo cargo commodities that we don't have in the, in the we don't have yet. Look at that terraforming uh, spores. Never seen that before. Uh, Barrelium. Is this the future name of barrel or is it a new one? Well, I would like to know as well. Uh, platinum as well is also something that we can't really buy and sell right now, but looks like it's eventually going to come in the future. Very interesting. And here we have eventually more. Uh, indication of what they want to be doing the different interfaces now these are the now i feel like for somebody who's going to be coming into this and learning this like we are slowly it's going to be implemented slowly so we'll be able to learn all the things as it comes it, that'll be fine but i feel like as a new player like take yourself back for a second and then look at this <laughs> you'd be like what on earth is this like what is that this is so much information squeezed and i know it's a concept like I say, I think if you're brought into it slowly, it'd be easy to understand. But as a new player coming into this and looking at that, I would be so confused. 
graphs right now that are not native to uh, to building blocks, unfortunately. So that is uh, that is why it's and they also have unloading cargo and loading, so you can do both at the same time, and you can hire workers for it, as you can see right here. So 10% and then you get another one's 10. So that's 20%. And then this one you can also hire for 2,500 uh, for loading. Taking more time. Uh, they are giving us here also a kind of a balance sheet that they want, to be, to, to be, to, to, they want us to have. So very cool indeed. Uh, what your income uh, is right now versus your expenses uh, based on the current cargo uh, that, that you are that you are carrying. And well, that's that good. Your current so you can figure activity. it out yourself. Absolutely loving this here. Uh, I like that there's also going to be the picture of the worker that you hire. So maybe there's a chance that we'll get to see the workers uh, physically. And who knows? Maybe the picture will be uh, will be very interesting because they, we could, this could lead to other scenarios. I could. I'm totally speculating here but i'm totally imagining like that uh let's say for example you know the picture of your workers but then oh there's another worker that doesn't have the same picture what is this guy doing here maybe it's a player maybe it's an npc that's actually a pirate that will infiltrate your ship you know the possibilities are endless and yeah. i think that would be very cool you know to have uh, you know some kind of security say hey what are you doing here you're not our worker i think that this this would be this this would be fantastic gameplay but uh, it would be but i don't i can't see that i don't, happen, I don't think honest. that's ever going to be the case but yeah, no. uh, if any war if any people at CIG is watching this video uh, maybe that's an interesting idea right anyway uh, that's pretty much it here for these uh, oh look at that more uh, more commodities here space weed interesting <laughs> probably another uh, type of space weed I also like how it says capacity freed by unloading capacity needed for loading that's good so you could see you know by unloading you're freeing up almost 600 and then you only need 420 to load it in. So that's that's good to see. I like that. A drug, I suppose. A I still wish it would show you how much they had. I mean, this graph is a little confusing. But to be able to go in and be like, okay, I want to buy, you know, let's say 500 SCUs or something. But you can see that they have, you know, maybe 10,000 available. Or you're trying to sell it. You have 500 to sell. And you can see that they have, you know, 5,000 available to buy. Just so you're not, like, constantly waiting around, not knowing, you know what I mean? System, exotic seating. So, looks like the cargo refactor is definitely going to be bringing a ton of new commodity, just like what we were suggest what we were uh, expecting here from the last episode of Insta Star Citizen. So there we have it. These pictures are very cool. Uh, unfortunately, not coming in 3.18. So take everything that you are seeing here with a grain of salt. But I thought that it was a very nice touch here from Jake Dorsey to bring us slightly just... radioactive boxes. Okay, and... so he's just summarizing there. So what I think we'll do is we will click onto the other video. We'll click onto the other video here um, because I want to hear. Two uh, different opinions. Because I think this guy was pretty positive about it. I'm pretty positive about it. There's a few things like the weight thing that I think would be very interesting. Um, but yeah, let, let's jump into the other video just to get a different point of view. Um, and see what this is by... His name is Grumpy Eye. And this is one that Vert linked to me. So let's go ahead and watch this. We may skip through it a little bit if it, or we may leave it. But I just want to see. Hello and welcome. So Stormknife CAG or a CAG em employee has... I'm jealous. This guy is such a good cameraman. I need to... <laughs> Look at that. And he has another one here. I mean, these are like $2,000 cameras, man. And I'm sitting here with my little Logitech Brio. <laughs> We're so professional here, guys. Posted something on Spectrum regarding the new UI for uh, commodities and all that. So let me roll the intro and let's talk about it. Hello, my name is... Okay. Star Citizen is not I love you, Grumpy, really but... a thing right now, and I can't fucking, I, I just can't play it. Anyway, anyway, so CAG has posted uh, a bunch of pictures on the new UI, but let. I just realized I'm covering his face. I don't know if you guys want to see it. Maybe if I put me down here so you can see both. See what they said first. 
Some of you have already partially guessed this, but a ship in the middle is indeed intended for displaying your cargo loading. In addition, underneath the ship is a space we have reserved for handling loading data and details. We felt this blah 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 blah. What the hell, Ben? Why weren't these in the ISC concepts uh, you showed? The concepts we showed in ISC are representative of what we're uh, working on putting in the game for 318. So whatever they showed us here uh it's not gonna be in 318 we're just gonna get what we saw already blah 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 it, it, this just doesn't matter and then he said there were similar cuts due to time and priority so i have looked at this a little bit i mean it's not that important he's just explaining you know it's a prototype things are going to change etc etc um the shipload and visual for example was cut months ago barely a week into the concept phase um the conversation boiled down to we think it's very important and we'll take this ui from okay to good agreed how long will it take it will delay persistent streaming and every feature depends on it by at least an additional couple of months no yeah we figured okay uh, such as displaying price supply history when you expand uh, a commodity building blocks doesn't support the necessary graphs natively and we don't record that data yet to be 100 percent clear these additional features hold on he also says displaying what other locations will buy sell the team has been pushing to make a dedicated mobile glass app up for this for years which is awesome i've been talking about that uh, and loading time is general engineering bandwidth they're designed, but sadly, the team doesn't have the headcount or dependencies from other teams uh, to action on them right now. We explored ways to scale implementation, time down, um, see the image with the wireframe, a view of the caterpillar, um, or a place ship temporarily. Nothing quite fit the schedule. Um, to give you an idea, we're having to steal an engineer from another team for this interface. And we only get in for about 20 days. Well, bloody, you're building this massive two-story building. Get some more people in to trade in a cargo. Uh, surely they know it's a huge part of their community. Like, I don't know why. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of things that are just as important. I'm not saying they're not. Um, just give them another person then, man are still planned the team is just balancing work on various features and intends to return to this so there will they will like release whatever they showed us already in the isc which is dog shit <laughs> and got me really really pissed off and I'm, I, I know that i'm not the only one but later they will come back to this and uh and do these and i'm gonna show you these in a second we need to update the kiosk for cargo refactor anyway and we took the opportunity to squeeze as many immediately impactful improvements showing uh, commodities that are currently hidden in the kiosk displaying demand etc as we could fit into the schedule without temporary work that we would need to do later and in the end tldr uh, the ship or storage locker or backpack in the middle is intended for future functionality it is a bit awkward right now that one third of the screen is it's not one third it's a it's a half of on the fucking screen it's, it's it's in the middle and it's like two thirds in the middle right like mm -hmm. let, let me let, let me try like so uh <laughs> let me try to do this so here uh what the fuck i get it i uh, mean there's no point in discussing that because they've already said that that that's just a, a placeholder so there's no point in us arguing about that it's taken by temporarily relevant objects but we had to cut some pieces of the design that would otherwise fill the space while the team is spread a bit thin on the features they are always fucking spread a bit thin this will hopefully save us some time when we are allowed to come back and take the next step to make these objects relevant to the purpose of the commodity kiosk now let's take a look at the pictures so so the other guy we just watched, I felt was pretty positive about it. Obviously, we had our, not concerns, well, I guess concerns, just about how the weight balance thing is going to work out. But let's see what he has to say. Uh, apparently, this is... So far, he seems like he's a bit more on the negative side. Still going to be there, but we're going to... Maybe not negative, maybe just frustrated. I mean, we've all been there. Have the ship, uh, like an x-ray of a ship. Uh, can you see this even? I guess you can. Let me just... Okay. So yeah uh do we really need to know where the cargo goes do we really need to know which box goes where like i don't uh i don't fucking care but okay yeah i don't 
care either. But if it is going to be like the other guy said, a balance issue, then yes, you do need to know where they're going to be. So, uh, Kari, whatever. Okay. Do we really need to see this? I don't think we do, but okay. It's the same with the, uh, whatever this is, uh, Avenger Titan. And then we have another X-ray that's a bit different. Uh, that just shows like the uh, different um, cargo holds. Okay. It's, I mean, it's got to be a balance thing, like the other guy said, right? Because obviously it's redacted here, so they're not showing it. But it says cargo overview, and you can see the different colors is correlating to this graph right here that we can't see. And I'm assuming this is going to be a weight thing. So the red is closer to the front, uh, the heaviest, and then the back of the ship's going to be heavy too, so it'll balance out. But then you have the two like lighter ones on either side. And then a medium one in the middle. So I understand that weight thing. And if that's the direction they're going, this is, you know, this is information that's needed. Because the other two pictures they showed was just like a white box of showing you kind of how it's going to be. This isn't that. This is actually <clears throat> what it looks like in game, right? This is clearly a user interface that's showing you the weight distribution of your ship. This isn't the same as what we just looked at. So, I mean, this is showing you how the ship's balanced out. So if that's the direction you're going, I, I think this would be needed. Still, why? Uh, why don't we have a graph of uh, all the commodities and all the prices around the verse? But okay. And then I would agree with that. I really, I think we all want that. It would be nice, you know, when we come to sell something to be able to figure out where it's selling. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of crazy. In the real world, they want it to be realistic. You can do that. So in game, like if we want to find out where it's selling, there's a lot of third party like websites you can use that show you where to sell it. But we shouldn't have to do that. It should be implemented in game. There should be a graph showing you, you know, how much it's selling for, how much, like if they say like this location is buying, you know, this specific thing for X amount of money, but it should also show you how much they're willing to buy. So you don't want to fly all the way there. And then find out that you can only sell a fifth of your cargo. You know what I mean? So it would be helpful, you know. Um, and obviously you'd have to keep in mind by the time you get there, somebody else may have already been there. So is it worth going if you can own, if they have enough to sell the cargo you have, but no more than that. Are you going to risk going there hoping that no one else has been? Or are you going to be like, you know what, I'm not going to go and sell it there. I'll sell it at the next place that's buying it just for a little less. But they have tons that they're willing to buy. So it will definitely make you think, and I think that would be really cool. Um, but yeah, they definitely need something like that. We all agree on that, I'm sure. We get to this. So this looks a bit better because there's like a bit more info and uh, the Kari is smaller, I guess. But, um... but again, it's like we've talked about in the other guy's video, and I'll say it again. Right here, it says concept work in progress. And I even said myself, you can't... We can obviously give our opinions and hopefully they listen. But I'm not going to hold this to them as like, this is the final product. And I hate, it's going to change. It's, it's changed in a week. So it's not going to be like this when it comes out. I don't know what to tell you. Like still, it's not, it's not really that useful info on the size. Like you can't see the mass. Uh, you see units instead of SCU. I guess that's, that's fine. Okay, whatever. But the thing in the middle is what is the most important. So cargo transfer. You are unloading three SUs or no, five SUs and loading seven SUs. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is the progress. Three out of five, zero out of seven. Okay. And that's going to take you 16 minutes and 50 seconds. Now, it's going to take more than that because it's already, you can tell it's already like this black part here. But I'm guessing is the time that's already elapsed. So it's going to be probably this is closer to 20, 30 minutes, I would guess. Depends. If this here is 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So I'm guessing this is like 20 minutes. And this time that has passed was just for like three SEUs. Yeah, so, okay. you, you so we can say that it probably takes like 20 minutes to load and unload like 20, uh, what is this? 12 SEUs. Again, though, I wouldn't take that to heart. I mean, this is literally just a, a concept. I'm sure the people who designed this weren't even think... They just wanted to... Sh hey, this is kind of what it is. Not like... Th this is exactly what it is. You know, this is just a, a mock-up. And uh, you can hire bots. You can hire uh, NPCs. 
Um, and it's just gonna give you like 5% time reduction each. And this is the far future because they still need to like build and, and animate and all of that. They need to do the uh, NPCs that are gonna do- I don't think they will. These but... tasks, so uh, yeah. Uh, is this a good- I, hon I honestly don't know how that's gonna work with the NPCs that we just talked about. Is it gonna be, it'll just take time, but it'll you will see it in the back end. Or would you physically be able to see them? Obviously physically being able to see them will be better. But I think that to be able to do... That would be just way too difficult, I think. Like, even if you got 10 people, real people, to help you, it would be difficult. Let alone NPCs. And I think it, you land in different places each time. So how's the NPC going to track a path to your ship and so on and so forth? Right? Unless they make it so you have to land in a specific spot and line it up perfectly. Then it could possibly work. But even then, I don't think it'll work time fuck no like 20 minutes of just like waiting there for i don't know 12 seus and also the thing i didn't notice is this is um 20 minutes by the looks of it including a five percent reduction because they already have one of them um but again i'm looking i'm doing what i said not to do which is taking this literally jesus fucking christ okay uh, i guess that like uh um uh, you guys that are traders are going to be really happy about this and look, let's okay so he's not a trader okay he said, you guys that are traders. So he's not a trader. Makes sense. Look at the last picture. Now, this is obviously uh, just a placeholder because Scuttle's Black cannot have 592 SUs or... Yeah, they're all placeholders. Let's be honest. It says 1,000 here. Like, it's just not a thing. Uh, on the side here, you're not missing anything. There's hematitite, pyrite, magnetite, and all of that. Some, like some like stuff that you can buy and sell i'm glad Doesn't there's more matter. stuff coming in but again uh hire workers to reduce times uh one worker is minus 10 percent of the time and one so it's different you know and this is obviously a bigger ship maybe this is a, a caterpillar and, uh, again you can't take this per this is literally they've just this is an example so i don't want to get into that but by the looks of it the time and price is different worker is going to cost 2500 uh, AUAC or UAC in the end and for like 488 SCUs it's gonna take you three hours and 23 minutes to <laughs> I didn't see that <laughs> I didn't see that in the first go around Woo! yeah so basically to, to fill up a caterpillar or maybe that could even be you know a C2 or something I mean that's yeah three and a half hours so you wouldn't you would have to literally fly your ship to the location and leave it there for like a day Right? You'd have to just fly there, leave it, and go and do something else. Or, which is what I will be doing, having multiple cargo ships and flying those around and having them all be loaded up. That way I should hopefully, if you time it right, be able to constantly be trading. Um, but to start off, you're going to have to take all your ships, you know, to all these different locations and then basically log out for the day and then log back in and then you can start doing it on a schedule. But that's only if you have multiple ships. Because, I mean, if it's going to take you three... And again, I'm not... I'm looking at this too literally, but just for an example. If it does take... I mean, this is three and a half hours. It says this is the amount of time. Or maybe this is total, and this is how much is left. It looks more realistic. Um, if it does take three and a half hours, the profit on that needs to be huge. There's no way that someone... Let's say you're... You only have a caterpillar. And you, you know, you love trading and you have to wait three and a half hours. I think that even, even if the profit is huge, I don't like that. Even if they gave me 10 million UEC profit, I don't like that. Because it it, it takes away the fun of being a space trucker, right? You, you want to be able to constantly be going around trading, flying around, going to new locations. You don't want to have to wait three and a half hours. Some people don't have three and a half hours of playtime. Right? So this is literally going to be like, okay, you log in, you have enough time to do this, and then you, you know, tomorrow when you log in, you can sell it or whatever, and then you do it again, and then tomorrow. So you're basically doing it once a day for most people, uh, which is not what I think traders want to do. You, They want to be able to log in and have, you know, three hours of trading, not waiting around. But again, I'm taking this literally. I don't think this is going to end up like this. It's just, there's no way. It takes away the fun in it. <clears throat> like, uh... I would assume this, if this was for like a whole series ship, like the whole C, whole E, whatever it is, these massive traders, 
that don't go planet side, right? The ones that stay out in the stars and star and go to the space stations and stuff. Or maybe in the future when the whole series ships come out, they'll actually have cargo ports and it won't be like the space stations. It'll be like smaller space stations that won't have hab decks, right? It won't have hab decks, restaurants, all that stuff. It'll literally just have uh, maybe a vendor machine for food and water, but it'll literally be a cargo place where you buy and sell from. But those massive ships, yes, I would I would be fine if they say it takes three and a half hours to load like a whole E, right? I would be fine with that because that just makes sense. But for, I mean, like a caterpillar or something, nah, nah, mate. Loaded up or unloaded or whatever uh, with a, with a worker that uh, you can hire, uh, so they reduce the time. And then uh, they t like obviously, well, obviously you should be able to uh, help the workers and you should be able to do it on your own. But it's not going to reduce the time that much. Therefore, you will need uh, I don't know SRVs and all that, so you can uh, or not even you like you shouldn't even use the. Uh, ships with like small SU boxes, I guess, because <clears throat> it's gonna like it's gonna take a while. So just well, no, it's the opposite. If you you know want it to be quicker, the smaller the ship, the quicker it is to load and unload. Buy the ships, the new ships with big 32 SU containers, because yeah, that's that's gonna be uh, more useful than this. And th this is what I was talking about like six months ago when I said that th this is why they are selling the raft, this is why they are uh, doing the hull E and all of that because cargo refactor is gonna completely destroy what we know about cargo right now, and you're gonna just have this. And that okay, so I think we're done with this little fella. Um, interesting take. I think it's more comes from frustration than a hate for trading. <laughs> um, I think, I don't think the cargo refactor and the whole series ships and all these ships they're making now that have the containers, right? Instead of what we all, what we currently have. Uh, then I don't think they're going to be a car, like a, what we know it killer, right? It's not going to ruin trading or change, change trading. I think they're different types of ships. Um, like I say, the whole series ships, for the most part, are starbound ships, right? They fly around systems um, and go to, like, cargo ports in the stars. They don't land. They're too big. They can't, like, they're not made for landing on planets or moons. Um, except for the smaller ones, like the whole C and, or A and B or whatever. Um, but I, I, it'll be interesting to see how the Caterpillar and the C2 fits into that narrative. Um, because obviously they are changing the way they're doing cargo, but how are the existing ships going to fit into that? Um, that's what's going to be interesting, and that's something they're going to have to figure out, because the way that they are going, like he said, is more towards, you know, having crates, and having those crates kind of loaded on the exterior, um, more so than on the inside, having to go into the ship. Um, so that'll be interesting how they decide to do that. I don't know how they're going to do that. Um... But as far as the time is concerned, like I say, waiting three and a half hours for like the massive whole series ships, that's fine. For a Caterpillar, that's not fine. That's not going to cut it. People want to trade. They enjoy trading and they want to just be able to trade all day, like nonstop. They don't want to have to stop and wait. Maybe you have to stop and wait for 30 minutes. That's understandable. Still annoying, but it's realistic. Uh, but three and a half hours, man, get out of here unless it's a big massive whole series ship. Because uh, that just ruins the fun, you know, I, as somebody who likes space, tr space trucking, it's more so the actions of doing it um, that I enjoy and sitting around waiting is, is just not enjoy, you know, enjoyful to me. Is that even a word? Enjoyful? Joyful. It's not joyful to me. Um, I do like the idea of them adding all of these new commodities, though, because I think that'll open up um, a lot more opportunities for traders. Because right now, let's be honest, there's... Maybe one or two things that can give you good profit. And everyone does those one or two things. So there's never any available cons consistently. And when you try and sell it, you have to wait as well sometimes. But I think if they opened it up and had multiple different options. So it would balance them out. So you'd at least be able to trade and not sit around waiting all day. Um, because that just wouldn't work. I mean, right now, there's not that many people that play live constantly. It's probably like 3,000 they have online at a time. When this game launches or goes into beta, I'm assuming they're going to want, you know, tens of thousands, if not more people playing at a time. And if that's the case, they're going to have to change the way they, you know, 
Like right now, it's already stressful with 3,000. And out of those 3,000, there's maybe a very small percentage that are trading at the same time. And it's still like a bottleneck. Um, so I think having more things to buy is better. But even if they kept the same amount as they have, it needs to be a living, breathing ecosystem. Whereas if somebody does buy, let's say, all the titanium and sells it, the price drops, maybe there's not available to buy. Something else should go up and down. You should be able to watch the market and see. And that's where the better traders will come out on top. The ones that watch the market and see, okay, this is selling really low right now because no one needs it. There's no demand. So I would go and buy that for super cheap, hold on to it, and then sell it when the prices go up. You know what I mean? Um, so that's kind of what I would like to see. I would like to be able to look at a graph from on my Moby glass, go into like stock markets or not stock, but you know what I mean, and just see all the graphs, see what's selling. There's live, right? And then being able to see at these locations what they have, what the demand is before you even get there. Um, what's the demand? What can I sell there? things like that. It would be interested instead of having to go to a third party website that does it there. Um, because it's it's just frustrating. And I think we could all agree on that. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry, it was a little longer. But there was a lot to talk about. I wanted to see the two different points of view. And um, this second guy was definitely a lot more negative towards it. But again, it could be out of frustration. But he made it seem like he wasn't a trader anyway. So I'm not sure what he's frustrated about. I think it's just in general progress in the game, right? Um, that he seems upset about. But the other guy seemed very cheerful and he was very positive. And I'm actually very positive towards this. I think it's a great idea. I think there's a lot of things that they're going to have to fix and tweak. But again, this is a concept work in progress. It's going to change. This has changed so much over the last week. It's going to change a lot over the next year. Let's be honest. There's probably going to be things they're going to implement and then change completely anyway after they've already implemented it. So uh, it seems like they're going in the right direction though. And by the right direction, I mean they're actually doing something with trading. <laughs> You know, whether it's good or just do something. We're sitting here with a stick poking them, like, do something. Um, but yeah, so anyway, that's it for this video. Like I say, Space Truckers meeting, our weekly Space Truckers meeting, will probably begin on Saturdays. Um, so this Saturday, we'll have something. And then going forward, I think every Saturday, we'll have our Star Citizen Space Truckers Union meeting. And we'll go over good um, trades you can do or that's profitable or beautiful places you can go or good you know like i say trade routes or you know we'll go over things like that on saturdays and then in the week we'll do the beautiful trade locations and then there'll still be videos in the week of other topics if you have any ideas of anything else you want to do let me know in the comments but um i just kind of want to go back to my roots which is trading because i love it and i feel like you know when i speak on trading it comes out of passion and it's something that I'm interested in, so I know a lot more information about it. Whereas when I talk about other things in Star Citizen, I'm, I'm not as knowledgeable about it. And I think, you know, I like to be truthful and it shows if I'm not and if I'm not passionate. So it's like I'd rather leave that for the people that are good at that. And I'll stick to what I'm good at, which is trading. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. And I'll see you tomorrow with some space trucking meetings. And yeah, have a good one, guys. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. See you tomorrow. Bye.